While sipping an ice cold beer can be an incredible experience, enjoying a well-made beer cocktail can sometimes be even better. So stay tuned to this episode to find out exactly what we're talking about. Welcome to Cocktail Limelight. I'm your host, Eric Castro, and today we're gonna to be examining three of my favorite beer cocktails. And I'm really excited to share these three drinks with you because they're all different in style and in approach. So no matter what mood you're in, I'm pretty sure that you're gonna find one that you're gonna like. One is served tall and refreshing. One is served in an old school Victorian punch style. And the last one is a riff on the gin sour, except with a little bit of beer to give it some extra depth and texture. As for me, I love making cocktails with beer. And in many ways, I see it as an alternative to gaining complexity from aromatized wine or topping a cocktail with a bit of sparkling wine. And just like sparkling wine or aromatized wine, beer comes in a variety of styles and formats. So once you start incorporating beers into your cocktails, the opportunities to create new and interesting drinks are honestly limitless. Now as for the first drink I'm making, it's called a fortune teller and it's a combination of lager or pilsner mixed with vodka. Now I know a lot of times vodka gets a lot of slack from some of the snootier craft bartenders, which I think is a shame because vodka does have its role to play. And especially in this cocktail, I think it does that really well. Where I feel that vodka is oftentimes really good at fortifying the flavors of the other ingredients. And in this case, it's there to lend a little additional heft and body to the beer, which is taking center stage. In addition, this drink is perfect for keeping cool, while at the same time being a great entry point for a lot of folks who've never had a beer cocktail. So let's go ahead and make one. To make a fortune teller, first we're gonna start out with three quarter ounce lemon juice, as well as three quarter ounce simple syrup. Next, we're gonna add an ounce and a half of vodka, followed up with three orange slices that we're gonna lightly muddle. Next, we're gonna add some ice and give it a good shake. And now that we're done shaking it, we're gonna top it off with an ounce and a half of your choice of lager or pilsner. Now let's go ahead and strain it over the rocks into a chilled goblet. And there you have it, folks, the fortune teller. Approachable, delicious, and a bona fide, certified patio pounder. Now this next one is called the Abbey Street Punch and it was inspired by the Victorian punch bowls of old. This drink features Guinness and the stout plays off of the Jamaican rum and allspice in the drink to create something tall and refreshing with a rich and creamy body. For those of you that don't know, Guinness Stout is brewed at the St. James Gate Brewery in Dublin and that location is where Arthur Guinness signed a 9,000 year lease back in 1759. Yup, I said 9,000, which seems a little excessive in terms of a lease, but you know what? When you believe in your product, you believe in your product. By the way, I learned that and much more in a webinar titled, An Expert Guide to Beer, Flavors, and Styles, which is a training session available for free over at diagiobaracademy.com. If you'd like to check out some of their education as well, which I definitely recommend, be sure to click on the link down below in the episode description. But in the meantime, let's get back to the drink. To make an Abbey Street Punch, first we start out with three quarter ounce fresh lime juice, along with three quarter ounce simple syrup, in addition to a quarter ounce of allspice dram. Now be careful when you're pouring ingredients like allspice dram, because if you under pour, the drink's gonna be missing something, but if you over pour, you could ruin the drink altogether. So just remember that a little goes a long way. Next, we're gonna add a half ounce of Jamaican rum, along with an ounce of Irish whiskey. Now let's go ahead and add some ice and shake it up. Now we're getting ready 
to pour it over the rocks into a chilled cologne glass. But before we do, first we're gonna to top it off with an ounce of Guinness Stout. Now I know a lot of folks out there are surprised to see a drink with ingredients like this being topped with Guinness Stout, but what they forget is that the Stout is adding a depth and texture that you can't get from anything else. And now the drink's almost ready to be served, but first we're gonna garnish it with a little bit of fresh grated nutmeg, as well as a lime wheel. And there you have it, folks, the Abbey Street Punch, rich with notes of baking spice and citrus. Cheers. This last drink that we're gonna be making is a style called the Flip. Now the style of flip that this drink is made in dates back to the 1800s at least. Now this style of drink is very similar in format to an eggnog. However, it differs in the sense that it contains no milk or cream. Instead, it achieves its creaminess from the use of a whole egg. But for this drink, we're gonna take that body and ramp it up even more with a little bit of extra Hefeweizen for added depth and complexity. Now this specific cocktail I came up with back when I was working at Rick House in San Francisco about 10 or 12 years ago. This cocktail was for a special event and the idea behind this cocktail was to combine and intertwine the citrus notes from gin with those that you get from the Hefeweizen. The result is a refreshing and brisk cocktail that's a bit more fluffy and aerated than the traditional gin sour. Now let's go ahead and make one. First, we're gonna start out with a half ounce of lemon juice along with three quarter ounce simple syrup. And now we're gonna follow that up with one ounce of gin. And we're pretty much ready to shake. Before we do, we're gonna add an entire egg to our tin. Next, we're gonna combine everything together and give it a good dry shake. Now that we have our drink all fluffy and aerated from a good dry shake, we're gonna add ice and shake it once more. And now that we're about ready to strain this mixture into a cold glass, first we're gonna stop to top it with one ounce of Hefeweizen. And now it's time to strain it into a chilled coupe. Look at how frothy and delicious that looks. And as much as I wanna take a sip, I gotta make sure to practice a little bit of patience and wait till I garnish it. And in this case, that garnish a fresh orange twist. And there you have it folks, the Treehouse Flip. It is a bouquet of citrus and refreshing notes intertwined with the Hefeweizen, the Juniper, and the citrus. It absolutely has to be tried and tasted to be believed. And there you have it folks, three delectable and delicious beer cocktails, all in completely different styles and completely different formats. Which is why I feel confident saying that no matter what type of cocktail you're into, you're gonna find something that you like. But now that we're all done, are there any beer cocktails out there that you love? Are there any beer cocktails that you would like us to tackle in a future episode of Cocktail Limelight? If so, leave them in the comments down below and who knows, maybe we'll feature it in an upcoming episode. And now that we're all done, don't forget to muddle that like and subscribe button and if you'd like to dive deeper into the world of craft cocktails, be sure to check out the Bartender Large podcast, which I host on iTunes, Spotify, and anywhere else that quality podcasts are found. With that said, thank you all so much for tuning in, and we will see you again next week.